In this video, we're going to continue our study in Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle, studying chapter 3 of Book 2. Let's read the text together, and we'll discuss a bit as we work through the reading in our first reading of Ethics in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy's Classical Ethics course. Chapter 3 of Book 2. It is necessary to consider as an indication of habits it is necessary to consider as an indication of our habits the pleasure or pain which is attendant on actions. Let me just say, this is a very important concept presented here in chapter 3. If we want to know, are we actually growing in virtue? Are we actually becoming more virtuous? Are virtues actually becoming our habits? There's an easy way to test. There's an indication of whether or not habits are being developed, which are good. And it has to do with pleasure and pain. As Aristotle is going to explain, if you do something good but don't like it, that pain caused by the good action is an indication that the habit is not being formed. But if you participate in a good action and take pleasure in that action, that's a sign that the habit, the virtuous habit, is being produced in you. For example, a child eating vegetables because his mother threatens him with no dessert is not a child who's growing in the habit of temperance. You see that? The child's displeasure or pain when he's made to eat a healthy food is a sign or indication that the habit of, of temperance is not developing in him. Okay? On the other hand, if a person who has practiced eating healthily then, for some reason, eat something that's unhealthy and it brings them pain and they're, they're unhappy that they ate that, that, that unhealthy food. That pain caused by doing the opposite of the virtue is a sign that the virtue, the habit of the virtue, is developing in them. And they take pain by a vicious action or by not acting virtuously. Okay? It is necessary to consider as an indication of habits the pleasure or pain which is attendant on actions. He who abstains from corporeal or bodily pleasures and is delighted in so doing is a temperate man. He who abstains from corporeal pleasures and is delighted in so doing, is a temperate man. But he who is grieved when he abstains from them is intemperate. And he indeed who endures dreadful things and is delighted with his endurance or feels no pain from it is a brave man. But he who feels pain from the endurance of them is a timid man. For ethical virtue, the virtue that relates to ha habits or customs, ethical virtue is conversant with pleasures and pains. For we act basely through the influence of pleasure but we abstain from beautiful conduct through the influence of pain. Hence it is necessary, as Plato says, to be so educated in a certain respect immediately after our youth that we may be delighted and pained with things from which it is requisite 
to feel pleasure or pain. This is right education. Just to clarify that, Aristotle explains that Plato taught that it was important to discipline children to develop good habits so that they could be trained to take pleasure in good behavior and to be grieved by bad behavior. I can give you one example of this from my children's life. On the farm, our family has worked to garden and, and produce a lot of our own food, and we enjoy a quality of food, but also a simplicity of diet that has given us almost perfect health through the years. I've had children for 20 years, and we hardly ever have any sicknesses in our family, and it's owed, obviously, to God's blessing, but instrumentally, it's owed to the fact that we've maintained a simple diet with simple foods, and they've been produced naturally here on our own farm. And our children have experienced that health, and they take it for granted. And when they become adults, and they're free to, to eat and get whatever they want, or at times during their childhood, when there's just other food available, say for a holiday or some kind of celebration, and maybe we eat some junk food, um, they'll complain that they feel sick afterwards, or that that food's not as good as their other food, or they wish they could just go back to simple meals like they, like they used to have. And so they, they experience the health and, and, and the benefits of temperance, and then they feel the pains of intemperance, whereas some people are just so accustomed to eating unhealthily that they just take for granted having a sick stomach, not feeling well, um, you know, indigestion, all kinds of problems caused by their food. They take it for granted. And by their habits, they actually, they actually don't sense that pain with intemperance that they should sense if they were trained by good habits and temperance. So that's an example of what Plato says should be a goal of good education, to actually give children the experience of good habits so that they can compare that experience with the effects of bad habits. A, a verse in the Bible that I think relates to this, in the book of Proverbs, it says, train a child in the way he should go train a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it i think the point of that proverb is that when a, when a child experiences the benefits of virtue and then through his own experience if he if he departs from virtue and through his own experience participates in vice he'll be able to compare the life of vice to the life of virtue and he'll see that the life of virtue was better and happier and will return to it and will remain in it in old age <clears throat> moving on in our reading if the virtues are conversant with actions and passions but pleasure and pain are consequent to every passion and action, on this account also virtue will be conversant with pleasures and pains. The punishments likewise, which are inflicted through these, indicate the truth of this. For they are certain remedies, but remedies are naturally adapted to operate through contraries. Again, as we have also before observed, the nature of every habit of the soul is referred to and conversant with those things by which it is adapted to become better and worse. But habits become depraved through pleasures and pains by pursuing or avoiding these, either such as ought not to be pursued or avoided, or when it is not proper, or 
in such a way as is not proper, or in as many other modes as such things are distinguished by reason. Hence, some persons define the virtues to be certain apathies and tranquillities, but they do not define them well, because they speak simply and do not add in such a way as is proper, and when it is proper, and such other additions as are usually made. It is admitted, therefore, that virtue is a thing of this kind, which is conversant with pleasures and pains, and practices things of the most excellent nature, but vice is the contrary. From what has been said, likewise, we may obtain still greater evidence about these things. For as there are three things which pertain to choice, and also three which pertain to aversion, namely, the beautiful in conduct, the advantageous, and the delightful, and there are three contraries to these, the base, the disadvantageous, and the painful. The good man, indeed, acts rightly in all these, all three, but the bad man, erroneously, and especially in what pertains to pleasure. For pleasure is common to all animals, and is consequent to everything which is the object of choice. For the beautiful and the advantageous appear to be delightful. Again, pleasure is co-nourished with all of us from our infancy, on which account also it is difficult to wipe away this passion with which our life is imbued. We likewise direct our actions by pleasure and pain as by a rule, some of us in a greater and others in a less degree. On this account, therefore, it is necessary that the whole of this discussion should be conversant with these things. For to rejoice or be pained, properly or improperly, is of no small consequence in actions. Farther still, it is more difficult to fight with pleasure than with anger, as Heraclitus says. But both art and virtue are always conversant with that which is more difficult. For that which is well done is better when it is done with great difficulty. Hence, on this account also, the whole business, both of ethics and politics, is conversant with pleasures and pains. For he who employs these well will be a good man, but he will be a bad man who employs these badly. We have shown, therefore, that virtue is conversant with pleasures and pains, and that it is increased and corrupted by the same things by which it is produced, when they do not exist after the same manner, and that it likewise energizes about the things from which it originated. This is chapter 3 of Book 2 of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. So to summarize chapter 3, as we consider the study of virtue, we have to focus on the subject of pleasure and pain, because pleasure and pain are central to our participation in virtue and vice. And as the chapter said at the opening, pleasure and pain, how we feel about things, how we feel about different actions actually is an indicator or a test of whether we are truly good or not. A truly good man not only does what is good, but he does it for the right reason, in the right way, with the right motivation, at the right time, 
and he does it with pleasure. He himself is good, and the acts that he performs proceed from his virtuous soul. He is good, and the works that he does are good. A bad man may be coerced to do works that in themselves are good, but he does them with great pain. And because he doesn't do them with pleasure, he is not like the good man, and his good actions are not actually the, the, the sign of good habits or a virtuous character. We often choose to do things or not do things by whether or not there's any pain or pleasure associated with them. And in God's grace, sometimes virtuous actions are accompanied with pleasure. And at other times, uh, sometimes we have to choose to endure some kind of pain for the sake of virtue. Not because that pain is in us, but the pain is inflicted on us by some other circumstances. So this question of pain and pleasure as it relates to virtue and vice is an important focus as we study ethics. And Aristotle tells us that he is going to make sure that we focus on pleasure and pain as we continue in our study of virtue and vice in his Nicomachean Ethics. So I hope that's a helpful introduction. Study this lesson for your own mastery, and when you're ready to move on, we'll continue in our study of Nicomachean Ethics. God bless your studies.